Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you this special bracelet. It is called Semper Fi, and this is dedicated to one of my subscribers' dad. His name was Carol Hare, and he unfortunately has passed away. He was a Marine, and I want to show support and dedicate this to him. So if you can put some hearts down below for my subscriber, Joe Hare, I am sure he would appreciate the support. So again, this is dedicated to Carol Hare. This bracelet does take 220 bands total to create. The breakdown of that is 54 of the black, 48 of this brown color, 48 of the gray, which is tucked in there. You don't see it a whole lot. You'll need 46 of the white and 24 of the rainbow color in the middle. So let's get our supplies together and let's get started. To make this bracelet, you need eight bar pins total. The setup is four wide. And then where your long blue bases are, you're just gonna have another four connected directly in front. So eight total. You wanna have it so the outer ones are offset inwards and then the middle two are aligned. So it should look like that. You will also wanna have your hook and one C-clip, but if you have two C-clips for this bracelet, I do recommend it. I got that little tip from a subscriber of mine, and I'll show you at the end how we can do that, just for extra security. So the first thing we're gonna do is lay the border color, which is the black here. I'm gonna use gold jelly. So we'll start by laying one across the center two. We'll go out to the left out to the right and then we're going to go up the sides going straight so i'll start on my right side we're just going to lay this all the way up so if you start counting from the corner here this one's my first one i lay 24 of them This gets about seven, it's like seven and a quarter. Almost seven and a quarter is the length of the bracelet. Um, so you might need to adjust for your wrist size. So did everyone have a good Valentine's Day? Did you guys have any plans? Unfortunately, my husband works on the road, so he wasn't home with us to celebrate, but hopefully we'll do something this weekend. So I'm getting close to the last one. Actually, that was my last one. So this was the 24th right here, and then I'm gonna bring it in. So it should be one shy of the end if you're doing it the same as me. And then we're gonna come to the left side and do the same exact thing. So unfortunately, on Valentine's Day, I was in the ER room with my 17 year old. He caught the nastiest, nastiest stomach bug and has been vomiting for days Today, he's starting to feel a little bit better, but since Saturday, it was really bad. And then Valentine's Day, we went out to the ER. Actually, we had to go out twice. The second time, they gave him fluids. But uh, it was really bad. I haven't seen him or anyone that sick in a very long time. So that wasn't good, and it had me scared. But he's starting to do better today, so very, very glad <laughs> about that. Hopefully you guys had a better Valentine's Day. I'm just flinging bands everywhere today. Okay, so that's how your first layer of bands should be. Okay, so I took a second really quick and pushed them all down. 
And now the next layer of bands that we're going to lay are the gray that's in here that you don't really see all that much. Those gray ones there. And we are going to lay a bunch of X's. So I'm going to use this beigey color. And we're going to start here on the left. Diagonal and then cross it from the right. That band feels a little stretchy. I'm going to switch it. Like that. And then we're going to come here and do the same thing, cross it, and back over. So we're just going to lay X's all up the center. The only thing that I would say is if you start on the left like I do, start on the left every time. We will lay these all the way to the top when you reach the border where we brought it in. All right, there we go. So I got all my X's laid. There should be 24 sets of X's. Push them down and then we'll come back to the beginning to lay our next color. Okay, so now we're gonna lay the rainbow color that I have here. Now I'm gonna use all one color. I'm gonna use yellow. But if you want it to have this color pattern, I forgot to mention this. If you want the alternating colors, the X's should be like that right now. So I'm going to show you an example. If you want it, say, red and blue or whatever color you're using, you would have them alternating like that. And then for this next part, we're going to just lay horizontal bands starting on the second row like that all the way up. For this color pattern, you would need to lay... We skip the first row, starting on the second. Whatever color X you have here is what color you would lay the horizontal band. So my red would go here. Since my blue is here, blue would go on this one. Since red is here, red would go there. So always put whatever color X is here, you put that color in front of it. So I hope that makes sense. And that is for this color pattern there. I am going to do all one color, so I am just going to do yellow. If you just want a different color X and then a different color like I did here, then you would just do a different color on each pin here. But as I said, starting here, you're going to skip the first one, come up to the second and third, and then go all the way down like so. And we will lay it on the very last row as well. Now for this band, you do not want to use something, and it's only for this part, you don't want to use something that is very, very stretchy unless it holds its shape well. Like if you stretch it out and then it goes back to its shape, that's fine. If it stretches out and then stays stretched out, don't use it for this part because this particular band, the way that we loop it, if it gets stretched out, it's going to look messy when it comes off. And as I mentioned earlier, you will lay one here on the last pin right there so that's what it should look like we're going to take a second push all of those down and then we'll lay the next set of bands so now we're going to lay the gray color that you don't really see too much but it's right there and i'm going to use red now once again 
Well, first let me show you what we're doing. We're gonna lay diagonal bands going like this. So you'll start on the right, bring it in, and the left, and bring it in. We're gonna do that on each row. I'm using red, a whole different color combination, but if you are using this color combination where you're, you want the whole section to be the same, you will need to, you will need to look at the bottom of the X. So I have my red here and my red here. You would not lay red here. And it might look like you want to, but trust me, once we loop, it will not match. So you actually need to lay a blue there. So whatever color is in the front of where you're laying the diagonal band, which is blue here, is what color you want to lay for your diagonal. So this band here should match the X in front of it. When I come to lay this one, it should be red because that is what is in front of it. So now that is only for this color combination. If you want the entire section to look the same, that is what you would do. If you guys have any questions, just write me a message. I hope that makes sense. But we are going to do that all the way up. I just felt like it would be easier not to do all one color for the video. Just trying to explain it. And just for seeing it. It would be a lot more confusing for you to see because it would all be a lot of the same color getting looped. So that's why I'm doing it this way. But if you are trying to do all the one color and have any problems, like I said, just shoot me a message and I will help. So that's where my last one will go. So nothing here on the top. That's what it should look like. One last time, do not lay it on the last row. Okay, so I pushed all mine down and now the next color we're gonna lay is this tan or brownish color in here. So for this part, we actually need to turn our loom around. So right now the openings are facing away from us, which is how we always lay them. But for this time, we're gonna turn our loom around like so. You want the openings now facing yourself and we are gonna lay these, I guess you would consider it being laid backwards. So I'm gonna use blue and we're just gonna start right here like we would lay a border, but we're laying it with the openings facing us and we're just going to start here like that and we're going to go straight up the sides so remember make sure that the openings or arrows are facing you Hoping this color combination comes out okay. I didn't have a scarlet color, um, so I used red, but the Marine Corps colors are supposedly scarlet, scarlet and gold. And I did see some pictures. It had there was some blue and some yellow in some of the pictures, so that's why I did this color combination. So when you get to the top, you're going to stop right here. You're not going to bring it in. Stop on that straight one there. We're going to do the same thing going up the left. And I'm going to just jump off camera and get that lead really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so I bleed mine and I did push them down a little bit. So we're going to leave our loom exactly like this. We're going to be up here at the top still. And you're going to grab two of whatever color that you were just laying. And we're going to put a cat band on each one of these corners. 
So put it on and wrap it around again. So it should be wrapped around two times. Same thing on the left. Because we're going to start looping from here. And we're going to loop this all the way down. So instead of starting down here and looping up, we're going to start up here and loop down. There's two ways you can do this, and it's really up to you whichever way is easier. So the first way, you want to hold the cap in with your finger for this first one because it will pop off. So we're going to go into this cap band right here, grab that top band, and you need to bring it forward or down towards yourself like so. Do it carefully because if you don't do it carefully, that will pop off. So go in there again, move the band you just put on there out of the way. I kind of push it to the side a little bit. I pick it up and I grabbed more than I was supposed to. Let's try that again. So go in this, let me zoom in. We're gonna go in here I go to the side so that I can grab the top band. Make sure you're only grabbing the top. I push down with my left finger on the last one that we did so it doesn't pop off. And then I swoop it off and attach. I'm going to do it that way one more time. Like that. Or you can turn your loom around. This might actually be harder for some, but I just want to show you. So this is the last one we looped. So you go in there, but you have to push it out and reach around to the front to grab that top band. And then you can just pull it down. So I'll show you that again. Go inside that. Make sure you're only grabbing the top band on the one in front. And bring it down. So this is what it's looking like. So it's just a single chain except you're looping it backwards which is why it's a little bit tricky. Whichever way is easier for you, you go ahead and do. I tried making it easier and just doing it the normal way, but for some reason it makes a difference and the bracelet was coming out just a little different. I, I didn't like it. I liked it better this way. It was a little bit tighter on the sides for some reason. So, unfortunately, I left this part in. But hopefully, it's not too difficult. I know I've done this before. So, I think you guys got it. Do our last one here, which brings it in. Like so. So we're going to do the same exact thing on the right side. So come back up to the top. Make sure you hold that cat band from the back. Mine wants to pop off. Be mindful of that. All 
Alrighty. So I'm probably ahead of you, so just hit the pause button until you get caught up. And then once both of your sides are looped all the way down, we are going to loop these yellow or whatever band you have wrapping around the center too. And once again, we need to go to the top of the loom because we have to start at this very first one up here. Or I guess it would be considered the last one, but you know what I mean. So we're going to start here. Let me zoom in because this is a little tricky. So we're going to start by grabbing this part of the band right here. And you're going to pull it over the pins like that. Once you do that, you're going to pull up towards the middle between the two pins. Twist your wrist to the left so that the band goes on there. I'm just going to let go so you can see. Grab the band, go up to the middle again, and now turn your wrist to the right, like so. So it makes that little design there. I'm going to show you that again. Come down to this one. You're going to grab the band. You're going to slowly pull it over so it's freely over the pins. Pull it up towards the middle, in between the middle of the two pins in front. Turn your wrist to the left and cross it over. You can let go. You don't have to, but you can. And then grab this again. Go up and now to the right. And what that's doing is wrapping a loop around each one of the pins. So this next one I'm going to do um, not letting go of the band. So grab it, bring it over, pull it towards the center of the pins, swoop it to the left, and then you let me move my wrist, you just swoop down, back, back up, and down. I'm going to try to do that from the side view so that my hand doesn't block you guys. Let me just fix that. So let's see. Trying to do this without my hand blocking here. So hopefully you could see that. If I'm blocking that completely, it's okay because you can see that you don't have to keep the band on. Once you cross it like that, you can let go and then just do the same to the right side. So the only thing that I would say is sometimes one side of this part here pulls more than the other. So the only thing you'll see me do is I'll go like this and just push both sides in on the diagonal bands just to make it even if it does that. Sometimes it doesn't. But again, I'll just go like this and just tap it with my hook and it just evens it out. So, we are going to do that all the way up. Actually, all the way down the loom because we're working backwards. See right here, this one's a little uneven. So, I'm just going to bump it with my hook and even it out. At first, it feels tricky doing this step, but I promise once you've done it over and over like I have, it becomes very simple. It's just a little awkward if you're not used to flipping your wrist back and forth. <laughs> I'm on my last one here. 
down here, we're just going to do the same exact thing. Like so. So this is what it should look like. So if you're not caught up, just hit the pause button and meet us back here when you are ready. So now we're going to be looping the diagonal bands, which are my red. But before we do that, I just want to get this out of the way and lay our cat band down here because we will eventually be needing that. So whatever color you have on top here, I'm just going to go ahead and place that on one of the pins here. It's a regular cat band wrapped around twice. And then I grab the entire cat band with my hook. And I stretch it over so that it's on both of those pins. And we're just going to leave that alone for now. Because now we're going to come up and do the diagonal bands. So, as you see, we have nothing here. Come up to here. We're going to loop from the outside in. So, from the right here, you're just going to go in that top layer. Grab your diagonal one, which is red for me. And you're just going to bring it down back to whatever pin it's coming from. Come up here, do the same thing, bring it down to the pin that it's coming from. And you can see that it's coming from right there. You're going to do the same over here. You can do one row at a time where you can go all the way up the right and all the way up the left. That's completely up to you. We're just going to bring them down like so. So I would say this part's pretty simple. But I will warn you, the next part is not so easy. It's a little tricky. But we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. <laughs> not too tricky, just maybe tricky to show, I would say. So once again, I am going to hop off and get those looped down and I'll meet you back here when I reach the top. Okay, so I have finished getting all of mine looped in and it should look like that. So we'll come back to the start. And now what we're going to do is two steps, but I'm going to show you one at a time. We're going to be looping the bottom part of the band that we just looped. We're going to be looping that band over the pen. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So we'll come up to this row. And from, from the sides here, you don't want to be in the middle. You want to be out here or over here to the side in front of the pin. We're going to loop the bottom part of the band, this band, whatever color you have on top, mine is red, over. So it should be the third band on that pin. And you're just going to pull it up and over and let go. And that just makes it sit behind the pin there. I'll do the same thing on the right one. So just grab the third band and bring it up and over and let go. Now what we also do is we have to also pull the back part of that X band right here. We also need to pull that over too. So it's also the third band. Now that that band is pulled over, if you count red is one, yellow is two, this would be three. So we're going to grab it, lift it over the pin, and let go. So on the right side, you can see it's the band that's wrapping diagonally like that. So 
it's right here. Pull it up and over. So we'll come up to the next row. We're going to grab the bottom, the third band here, the bottom band. When I say bottom band, it's not the bottom band on the pin. It's the bottom band of the diagonal band that we just looped down. So right here, bring that over. Now, it might be easier if you just go all the way up and do all of those first and get them all up and over like that. So you can do that all the way up, then come back and then do the back of the X. That's probably the safest bet so you don't miss any. Or you can do it one at a time. So I've looped the red up and over and now I have to loop the back part of the X. So I actually need to do this one. I didn't do this one yet. So it's right here. Bring it up and over, bring it up and over, up and over. So I already did my bottom looping here of the red band. So I'm just going to do the X one. Now this one I haven't done anything on yet. So I want to show you if you're feeling brave, you can do them at the same time. So you can grab the part of the X and the bottom of the red band at the same time and bring them over together. Like that. So you would be grabbing the third and fourth band at the same time and looping them up and over. Again, I would only do that if you feel comfortable. It does save time, I will say. So you can do that part however you feel comfortable. It's quicker to do them together, but I would hate for you guys to mess up because you want to save time. So if it's easier, you could do one at a time like that. As long as they all get brought up, it doesn't matter. I don't want to miss any myself. So that is what it should look like. Just make sure you go through and look and make sure your X's are all done, that you didn't forget any. I always double check that with this design. Okay, so once you have all of those looped over, we're now going to loop the rest of the X out to the side pins. So you'll start on the first row here. There's quite a few layers to move out of the way here because we have the top cap band, then the top layer of the center chain, and then it's going to be the X band. So you're going to want to make sure you're getting through all of those on top. And then grab not the bottom band, but the second to bottom band, which will be your X band right there. And it's going to come diagonally to the right. And do the same to the left one. The 
you'll come up to the next two centers. Now it will be easier. There's only two bands that you're moving out of the way, which leaves only one bottom band, and you bring that out to the right. And same on this side. So I just toggle right and left all the way up. Like that. Getting near the end here. I'm on my last X here. And do the same thing. Just like that. Okay, so now we are going to be messing with these blue bands right here. So whatever color you use for that chain, it's the second layer on the pin. And what we're going to do is we're just going to be grabbing the top band and bringing it over each pin. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to start on this corner one here. Right here. And if you look, this whole chain here, there's a top band and a bottom one. We're just going to be grabbing this top one and looping it over and letting it go. So we'll come up to the next one. Just going to grab the top one and bring it over and let go. The top one and flip it over. So it's not that it's hard, but if yours got twisted when looping, it can be a little bit like, oh, which one am I supposed to grab? But if you look towards right there, whatever one is on top right there, is the one you're going to grab. And it just sits on the inside there. So that's what we're going to do. I kind of work from the inside and just pull it in. So you'll just keep doing that all the way up. The left side. And don't do the very top one here, the cat band. So do all the other ones, but not that very top one. And then you'll do the same thing on the right side. Just grab the topmost layer and pull it up. Oh, I almost grabbed the whole thing. Like I said on the other side, I find it easier to go from the inside. Like that. So I'm going to do that all the way up and I will meet you here at the top. Okay, so I have completed mine. I wanted to do it off camera because my family's making a lot of noise up in the kitchen. <laughs> so I got mine all done. Again, don't do the very top ones. They are our, our cat bands. It just doesn't sit right. So leave those on. This is what everything looks like. And the last part that we're going to do is very easy. We're just going to loop our bottom layer here, which is our, quote, border. So from here... I'm going to go on the right side, grab the very bottom band, and bring it to the right. And then go in that one, push everything back, grab the very bottom, and pull it forward. And you'll do that all the way up. So you're just grabbing the very bottom band and pulling it straight all the way up.
Okay, so when you get the, to this top right corner, you're just going to do the same thing and grab the bottom and just bring it into the center. And then you're going to repeat that same process on the left side and just bring that left border all the way up. I just popped that off, but it's already secured, so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to loop mine up and I'll meet you at the top. So I'm at the top. I'm going to do the same thing and bring this top left one in like so. And we are going to get our C-clip handy because now we're going to go in the top pins and move everything out of the way to grab the bottom. And you're going to pull this up, but you're going to need to hold on to it. And you're going to need to bring the left side together and this is what we're going to put our c-clip on now once we get this off of the loom i'm going to show you how to put another c-clip on for extra security but for now i would hold this make sure that the bands are attached hold it until you get part of the top released with your hook because I made the mistake of letting go and one band popped out and then my bracelet started falling apart and that's never fun. So I just use my hook to release a couple of these sections here. And then once I know it's able to kind of hang there without being pulled, then I go and I continue releasing everything with my hook. Now, if you hold it, close here once you have the sides removed you can pull one section at a time but I would not just yank up and pull the whole middle off because it will pull these uh, middles too much okay so I got mine off of the loom and I did start tightening it up so the first thing that I do if the middle looks kind of wonky not hard but I pull left to right a little bit because sometimes these do need to be fiddled into place so I do stretch it gently you don't want to do that a lot and of course I always go up and down with it it just helps things kind of fall into place the main thing that I need to do is go around to these borders because sometimes they're really tucked in like that so if you want to get it to look as clean as possible you're just going to want to take your time and go around and untuck anything that is tucked in so as far as the c-clips go I want to show you a little trick here so the regular c-clip that I attached the opening is facing up but to reinforce it you can add a second c-clip facing down so you have one facing both directions and again one of my subscribers said that she does that to all of hers it just gives it an extra security and a little strengthening so if one pops off you have that back up so I thought that was a great idea I hope you guys do too Hopefully you find that helpful. So there you have my Semper Fi bracelet. This is dedicated to Carol Hare, Joe Hare's dad. Um, we are so sorry for your loss, Joe. Um, and we are thinking of you and your family. I hope you like this bracelet. I did the colors for this one. And specifically in honor of your dad as he was a Marine. So I hope you like it. If you guys like this design, please tag me at Love Saloon on Instagram. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.